podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. No breaks, no breaks, no fear, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. 2024's British Speedway season is in sight and we are here over the next couple of weeks to build up to those first fixtures as we head towards them in mid-March. Joining us in this episode, two guys at the top of British Speedway. We'll hear from the BSPL chairman, Rob Godfrey. We're looking at, uh, one of, like you say, one of the best premiership years that I can, I can actually remember for a long, long time. Probably a dream come true, really, and... Uh, Long may that continue. Also joining us, CEO of the Premiership, Phil Morris. I know fans were up last year. I know season tickets are up this year. I really feel that people should look at them four or five comments and look at the positive. We've got good riders in the UK. Things are going in the right direction. In-depth chats with both the chairman of British Speedway Promoters Limited and the CEO of the Premiership in this first episode of 2024 of No Breaks, No Fear. No Breaks, No Fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Welcome back to No Breaks, No Fear. Here we are then. You've been ticking the days off, counting them down. And the speedway season is in touching distance now. Maybe you've seen some uh, pre-season footage of your favourite rider blowing away the cobwebs at one of the pre-season practices somewhere. But before you know it, we'll be fully back in business. The 14th of March is the first official day of the British speedway season. And in this podcast this week and of course next week as well we'll have plenty of coverage for you to bring you previews and look ahead to what is coming our way in British Speedway this episode we're speaking to the two guys right at the very top of British Speedway in a while we'll hear from Rob Godfrey chairman of the BSPL but first in this part we're going to have a chat with uh, Phil Morris, who's the CEO of the Premiership. Lots to discuss. The Premiership is looking tremendous this season when you look at the lineups and everything else. We'll go through all of that. Uh, but first of all, I started by uh, talking to Phil about where we were a year ago because he didn't really have a great deal of time to get his feet under the table before the season began. And uh, his findings from his first year in British Speedway. Here is Phil Morris. Yeah, so obviously when I came in, <laughs> it was March of last year. But um, yeah, it was a case of uh, having a look at all the tracks, looking at where we were, evaluating everything. And, and again, I, I've always been very honest. I'm lucky enough to be involved in the Speedway Grand Prix, which is obviously the highest level of uh, Speedway racing in the world. And yeah, my eyes were probably fixed on small issues that I was fixing in that. I realised we had a lot more to do in Britain. I think everyone knows that. But we've got to start the the journey somewhere. I felt last year we started that journey piece by piece and we will carry on carrying on that journey for the fans, for the people watching on TV, for the riders, for the promoters, for everyone. So we, that's what we're trying to do. The big difference, I think, over the last year, the calibre of rider has certainly increased, hasn't it? And I know this was probably already in motion perhaps before your arrival, but Emil Saifutinov coming in to, to Ipswich, he's had a fantastic year. He was the rider of the year. Well, <laughs> he was the rider of the year. He was the top average rider. Um, but I think also everybody's sort of favourite as well that people loved seeing in action. But that has sort of bred more confidence, hasn't it, that now we've got Woofy here, Chris Holder, uh, now we've got Janowski coming in and, and so on. You know, th- these guys chat to each other and the word's getting back that, you know, Britain's getting its act together. Yeah, I, you know, I, I like to say my phone's been pretty hot since uh, the end of last season with many riders, including riders that obviously my job is chip, but I've linked quite a lot of riders to the, the championship as well. And uh, yeah, it's interesting when suddenly I get a message from someone and uh, yeah, it's interesting. Might not be a top level rider, but a young, maybe Polish rider that's really interested in coming up here. So it, it, it's nice to know that I'm a bit of a link, maybe, that can help that. And, yeah, I know if some of the top guys has come here as well, I've had help in, help in that along. And uh, I think one of the main things which people forget is we do seem to have got to attract in order a little bit better. And, you know, the safety element, so the riders do feel safe when they're on the tracks. Nothing can be 100%. We always have a track here. Now and again, that's not perfect. But in general, I think uh, anybody that comes here, they can race and they're not. And maybe five years ago, they were concerned about tracks and safety. I feel as if that is um, 
the premiership side where I've been involved with, I think it's been good. And the actual accident rates are very low last year. Uh, we know that could change any time. But yeah, it, it's, for me, there's a safety element that, that's helping that product. The product being a little better, what we said last year to me, um, it felt a bit cooler watching it on TV and then being involved in it, trying to build on that and uh, keep the riders involved and keep the fans happy. As you say, we all know there's there's a long way to go and British Speedway is not without its issues. Of course, we lost a couple of tracks last season um, in the form of Wolves and Peterborough and, and work obviously still going on through various parties to, to try and rescue those clubs. But you've also been involved in that inquiry into Brandon as well and you stood up and said your piece on the situation and I think it was really powerful and one of the big things that's come out of that that's you know in a in a legal proceeding you know it's been proved that Speedway is not a dying sport people can say what they like but it's not it's been proved that that is not the case and that, and that Speedway is growing again and you were involved in that and that is actually going to be really important that piece of information now and that legal precedent moving forward in the quest to save other tracks from a similar fate? Yeah, obviously, there's quite a lot to add to the copyright situation. I wanted to do my bit to try and help. Um, and yeah, I had good feedback from the parties that, that, that I did sort of help a little bit. So that was nice to hear. Obviously, the main goal of that was to um, get Speedway back to Coventry. That's not there yet. There's a long way to go. But yeah, the, that's uh, for me. It was a, a poignant moment when that case was won, because I do feel it gives a little bit of precedence for maybe some other cases. You know, you always look at case law and see what happened there. So I think that's a good thing. And then again, you mentioned the minister, sort of give it a big boost. Um, and maybe then you know you've only got to show that to the next planning committee that. Uh, the Prime Minister's behind it. That gives it a, a good a good lot of credit. Yeah, obviously, it's not there yet. But Coventry will be fighting for <clears throat> ground ryouts. Might be, it might not be on people's radar, but it's on my radar. I'm looking to have meetings and things like that. It, there's some other positives you've got working or not. So recently, it's very positive what's happened with both of them clubs. But then you've also got the, the negative, which we know last year was Peter Byrne, Wolverhampton. It was a massive shame. Um, I know Chris Van Stratton of Wolverhampton is working very hard to restart something. Obviously, not at one more green, but it, you know he's uh, doing everything he can to get Wolverhampton back on track, which is uh, the goal. Uh, Peter Burr again. There's a lot of people up there that's very passionate about trying to keep the sport alive, and uh, there's a lot of support for it there. And towards the end of the year, there was a lot of support for people for again good crowds, and they ended up being one of the strongest teams in the league. So yeah, of course, from a from a governing body, this is something that I want to try and start making more roads in to work closer with councils, and you know be be a better client, whatever you want to say, and uh, work in partner with the councils and keep them on board. Um, unfortunately. A lot of the tracks are privately sort of rented, and uh, if they don't want to rent something, you you know you can't force it. But we have to do our better to make a better strategy and stop this from happening. We do realise that it's something that maybe slightly be lacked. It needs to be better. But yeah, we have to try and stop this from happening, and we need to start building rather than trying to hold on to what we've got. Looking at 2024 and one or two of the changes that people might immediately notice when they go to their next meeting is something that actually you talked about last year. You were talking about uniformity and, and bringing British Speedway a bit more in line with what goes on in Poland and uh, Sweden, Denmark and the Grand Prix and so on. And countdown clocks are coming in. Two minute warning goes on. That's two minutes to the race starting, not two minutes just to saunter on the track and be roughly making your way around. You've got to be ready to race within the two minutes. And the um, randomised starts as well. The referee will hit the green button and then the tapes will rise uh, in a, a random time period from that green light going on. So the referee no longer releases the tapes, which is going to catch a few people out, I reckon, but it's also going to mean that you, you can't second guess the system. Yeah, um, obviously the two-minute clock was one of the first things I wanted to get on board when I, when I took the job. 
And I'll be honest, I was disappointed I couldn't get it across the line. I had a lot of support, but bureaucracy of the system, whether it's right or wrong, needed to be tabled, needed to be agreed. And uh, we got it into this year. So um, in reality, we are like every other country in the world, which is quite a simple product for the referee, for the fans, for the rider, for the TV audience. You need to be ready at zero. Part of the show as well. And it can build up then to be in a, that two minutes is part of the build up of the actual race. So again, that's a something that's in. I'm, I'm glad that's in. That was a bit strange to me why it wasn't. And as long as you're on your way to tapes and things like that, I never, never ever sat right with me. But yeah, so I was uh, really keen to push that. And to be fair, I got 100% uh, support on it. Weird thing. So it almost makes you wonder why why it wasn't done before. But anyway, that's uh, I can only tell you what I know from the last year going forward. And yeah, we've done that. Obviously, random my starts. Um, statistically, in the Grand Prix, there's been less uh, false starts and less movement. Um, I don't know if everyone knows, but it's not just a Grand Prix. This has been rolled out in Sweden, Denmark, and Poland. We were the only country that didn't have it, basically, out of the big, the big countries. There is going to be uh, teething problems. There will be riders going through the tapes, and people will be saying, look, look what you've done, look what you've done, because they'll hold them a bit longer or a bit shorter, and maybe the riders are not used to that in this country. So hopefully, once we get past them first few weeks, everything will settle down, and then riders will know that they can't guess. Because when you know nine times out of ten, it's pretty similar in the past, so riders had a feel for when it was going to start. Now, you know, I can't say exactly where, but it could be maybe one second, it could be two seconds. So there's no way you can guess where it's going to be. So uh, hopefully that will change the rider's mindset to think, okay, I'll drop the clutch when the tape's up rather than the guesswork in it. So that, that's that's the plan. And, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, them two things will put us in line with everyone else. And it also helps when a rider races Poland, or Sweden or Denmark, and then comes back to Britain and things are different, whether it's a two minute clock or the starting system. Yeah, it's good to keep it similar. So, uh, yeah, that, that hopefully that will be a good, good point. So, those riders that, that race on the continent, then probably a lot more used to that than the Grand Prix riders, you know, that it's probably the, the British riders as such that have not been over there that, that might well get caught out by, by all this a little bit more. Definitely on that. Excuse me. I, um, I remember. Melbourne and one of the Speedway Grand Prix. Well, I think we had a wild card. We had a rider move up and we had two reserves, all just come back fresh from a British League season. I think it was like Sam Masters, Brady Kurtz, Roland Tangate, um, these kind of guys. And I knew at the Grand Prix that year we'd worked on holding the start a bit longer. Instead of being one second, we was probably doing one and a half. We instructed our referees do that. And I had this feeling and I said, I predicted it before the event. I said to them all, I said, just be aware we hold the tapes a bit longer. And I think the first four or five heats, much three, four or five of them guys has been used to Brick League went through the tapes. It was almost like you can see that their brain had been trained to a certain... Uh, and, and, you know, this is natural in life. You know, we all do the same thing every morning, whether it's getting your car, whether it's brushing your teeth. You get into a routine and, and you think it's normal. But, yeah, that was quite interesting to see guys that had just come back from a full British season. And, uh, yeah, they were... Uh, go through the tapes quite regularly in the first few races and play and logged into it. So watch out for that then, but it will it will settle down. And um, Because riders, maybe people don't realise, but you know, riders will stand at the pit gate and they'll count, won't they? They'll see the green light go on and they'll count in their head and they'll see if they can work out the pattern. Then they go to the tapes and they think the, the, the referee's doing it on two. So they'll go green light, one, two, drop the clutch, and more often than not, they might be right. But that, obviously that's going to be different now. I could, and I looked at probably... 90% of the race, I could go, when the green light comes on, I could say, British Speedway, go. If you did that, I could put on every YouTube video, and I'd make a perfect start. And this is not, I'm not blaming any referees, because they got a difficult job. And uh, when this was brought into the Speedway Grand Prix, at first the referees weren't sure, but they felt it helped them look at the start line to see what's happening, and not worry about that So. Yeah, it's a small thing. Hopefully, we'll go forward with it. 
plenty of teams are going to be having their what they call you know the press and practice event where they get the local media down but there is a big event happening in Manchester later on in March the Premiership Media Day where every rider from the Premiership will be in attendance it's going to be a big day it's not open to the public but there is going to be a, a bit of a live stream Q and A with uh, with with some of the riders from the Premiership teams that you'll be able to watch on YouTube on the social media channels and what have you. So people can tune into that. I think it's going to be one o'clock, isn't it? But tell us about this media day because getting all these riders together in one room is is not something that um, has ever been attempted before and, and a rare thing to see. Yeah, it's something that I'd be very keen to something not just for the media but for content as well throughout the season. The clubs to have content for us to and and being honest. I look at some pictures and you'll have a van in the background, some will have trees, some will have a gate post. Um, it's not, not really good enough and professional enough. It needs to be done to a professional standard with our professional league. So yeah, I want the I want the pictures and the photographs and everything to be as as possible, professional as possible. Uh we're doing green screen work in the basis of a of a sort of documentary, not obviously we haven't got the money to do a Netflix documentary, which probably cost a million pounds. We're going to start something up there. We've got some social media content rooms. We've got Eurosport there doing some things. And, yeah, we're going to have a – I would like to say it's probably never been done anywhere in the world where a league has had all their teams together at one point, all riders. So we're trying to do something, make it as professional as possible, give as much content from a fan's perspective. It's not aimed at them. I've tried to do is keep them involved by when we do the press conference for the press. Obviously, we will live stream. And uh, a good friend of mine, Aaron Fletcher, top dog commentator on Champions League and Premiership, good friend and good friend of Speedway. And he's agreed to kindly to come up and uh, do the microphone work on that. So that will link us into other sports and give us a bit of credit. And yeah, that will be live streamed so people will be able to log in and see it live or catch up later on and watch it and yeah so we're um and there will be questions certain points so we will be closer to the day asking teams to give us some uh feedback and give us some questions to the riders obviously it will be vetted it doesn't mean everyone's will work but um it does mean that uh yeah, we will uh we will be doing something that's better hopefully for everyone for the riders for the fans and for everyone the standard of the teams in the Premiership this year is higher than it has been for, what, at least a decade, maybe more. Uh, and I think that really started this, as soon as Sheffield unveiled their team. They've, they've kept pretty much the lineup that won the league last season, That you know, the team that ended the season. So Ty Wolfenden, Jack Holder, Chris Holder together, still with Josh Pickering and the rest of the, the, the other guys there. So they've got a really strong lineup. And everybody else has looked at that and gone, you know, we're going to have to think of something here. To, to compete and, and especially when you've got Saifutnov and Doyle as well at Ipswich and um, you know you've got Grand Prix stars or ex-Grand Prix stars uh, littered throughout the teams now Yeah I think it's very open and there's, there's a lot of people who've got different opinions and I, I experts saying that oh, it's all about Sheffield and I'll see something saying well actually Kings Lynn have got a very strong all-round team especially the, the bottom two riders you've got Oxford which again some people think they be all singing, all dancing. Some people think they've got not so good. It's really interesting to see Leicester, to me, have got a very good, solid team. And yeah, with regards to Birmingham, obviously, people might think they're maybe the least favourites in the bookies' eyes, but I think they've got a good, solid team. They've got strong, strong bottom end with their reserve and uh, their rising star. And of course, they've got the two new guns that's not been to Britain, that's Vaslav Milik and Joy Pavlicki. And the way I look at that is these guys are they they wanna they wanna show themselves. They're not happy to come here and not not mix it with the other ones. Right? And, uh, yeah, I'm sure that you know every team you look at, there is literally something good about it. I honestly feel that. And the days of uh you know we don't want that team coming. I almost feel every team coming your track is going to give you something different. Not necessarily just the top guys either. The strength at the bottom of the well, and vice versa. Some of the teams that may have gone, let we would say top heavy, they have potentially got. Like you look at Sheffield, 
they've got a bit more of a younger, inexperienced six and seven, but that doesn't mean they're not going to do the job. And well, they're going to want to tell everyone that, hey, we can beat the sixes and sevens. So, hey, it's going to be a hopefully very, very interesting season. It seems very open. Lots of people are not sure which way it's going to go. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it myself personally, and I hope the fans are as well. We're looking forward to a good season and some new names coming back into the, the, the top flight as well. Um, I'm sure fans will be looking forward to going to, to Oxford if they've not been there already, you know, back to that, that you know great venue of, uh, of British Speedway and also back to Perry Bar as well. One question that does come up, though, is obviously when these clubs are making a greater financial commitment, Oxford, of course, operating in three leagues, Birmingham didn't have a great deal of notice that they'd have to move up because their hands have been forced due to available race nights. What checks, balances, support do clubs get, you know, um, before and, and upon being admitted to to the Premiership in from a financial point of view to make sure that they, they're they equipped to survive the season, you know? So both the teams that have come up, um, they, they, they gave enough uh, assurances that there would be no issues and... Uh, they were obviously interviewed. They were sort of checked and vetted, as you would say. And uh, yeah, we're, we're confident there will be no issues with anything like that. They're obviously into something a little bit different. It's a different level. Um, and everybody wants to be Bellevue, <laughs> of course, with a with a national stadium like this. And again, that's another team I did mention. But, you know, they, they got potentially the strongest top three if you look at it overall. Um, but yeah, we all want to be Bellevue, but you've got Oxford and Birmingham who are coming up. They're, they're fresh. They're um, it, it's, it's good for the sport that there's new teams involved. I think with Birmingham, obviously, yes, they've had a few years of, of hardship and struggling and towards, you know, having tough to finding riders. They've got their riders now. They've got their new team manager. I really hope people come out and support it. Um, obviously, financially, as most people are aware, there's a payment that comes from our media partner, Warner Brothers Discovery uh, Eurosport. So that obviously helps easier and ease the burden a little bit on uh, Oxford and uh, Birmingham. Doesn't mean that you know they're, they're going to be millionaires from it, but it helps. And I think if they've if they've done their business plan correctly, and uh, it's not my job to tell them what to pay riders, as long as they've been sensible with that. They've got a decent deal with riders, and uh, I feel they get a decent fan to the crowd. I hope, I'm sure, that they will have successful seasons in one way or the other. And beyond the Premiership, you've got lots going on, because uh, right here in, in Great Britain, we've got the Speedway of Nations coming back to the National Speedway Stadium in Manchester in July. So all eyes are going to be on Great Britain there. And, of course, uh, a competition that Britain did fantastically well in the last time it was uh, staged there a few years ago. And then there's all the stuff happening with the Grand Prix as well. So uh, a busy year, an exciting year of British Speedway ahead, but particularly, first of all, with that Speedway of Nations on the horizon. Yeah, let's hope it's a, a fantastic. We've got potentially one of the best racetracks in the world. And I say that in all honesty. Um, you know, the, the Bellevue racetrack, absolutely first class. Uh, normally, as we did in the World Cup, people sometimes forget the semi finals and the race off. But when we get to the, the business end, what a meeting that was in, in uh, Rossland for the World Cup. And I feel we'll have a similar thing. Uh, at Manchester for the final. Obviously, there's difference in class in some of the first earlier rounds, sort of semi-finals. We know that you've got, you know, a part of Smarslick racing against someone that might be a great race of the second division in Britain and Poland or whatever. It's quite a, doesn't mean it doesn't. You look at the, the Finnish lad that's uh, at Workington, Andy Vulas, you know, he went out and beat, I think, with Jason Bond, Nicky Pedersen, and I uh, can't remember the other one, Dominic Kubera, maybe. Uh, and Kalimi did it. So sometimes the, these guys can step up. So, yeah, it would be interesting to see if a new star comes out of it and does well. But, yeah, I think the tournament itself will be very... You've got 15 nations fighting to make it to the, the sort of 7 17 final. But, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to the Speedo Nations. Um, obviously, uh, being on home soil, it doesn't mean much to me. I'm very impartial in that. But I have to, uh, but I'm sure there will be a partisan crowd looking forward to the team 
keep them well. So that that will be good for, for British Speedway as well, hopefully. And then the Grand Prix, as you said, started in Croatia at the end of April. I'm very much looking forward to that as well. I've got my sort of double hat on, to switch from one to the other. But yeah, the, the Grand Prix is obviously something I'm looking forward to working with uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, do, doing everything they're doing, the, the, uh, the sort of forward thinking they're trying to do. I know there's a lot of negativity that we haven't gone to Australia and things like that, but I think I'm sure that will happen next year. But yeah, as we are this year, we've got a, a very good championship. There's a few new names in it, which again, that's another one that's negative and positive. I think up the last two years, you had 50% of the people in the world complaining it's a closed shot. When we make a few changes, then you have 50%. The other 50% complaining it's weakened it. So it's hard to get that balance. Um, we've tried to, um, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's going to be the top four riders from the Grand Prix Challenge qualify. So we've given a little bit more help that event and taken one wild card away. So, yeah, so hopefully, you know, I know people will say Jan Vetch and people like that might, might, might struggle, but hey, he's got to show himself, you know. He qualified on merit, he made it from the challenge, and he's got his chance at the big time. And, yeah, people will say over the last three or four years, you've had a few riders in there that maybe you might know are going to be towards the bottom of the field, but hey, it's, it's their life dream. It's what they're there for. And for me, it's easy to think about, you know, your smiles licks at the top of the field, but sometimes you look at Kim Nielsen, I think he made a final and a couple of semis last year. So, yeah, it's, it's good to have a little bit of diversity in there and hopefully the season will be a cracker. How do you find balancing your relationship with the riders? Because you've got to have these relationships and you've got a certain element of riders who are coming in and out of the series as well, whether they're injury cover or the wild cards. And you're dealing with everybody from, you know, Bartosz Schmarschlik to maybe a local guy who's who's having his first experience of the Grand Prix. So how is it balancing that? I would say very strong, very respectful both ways. Um you know, I, 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 I'm trying to look out for them. My, my, my job is to make sure everything's right for them, it's safe, it's uh, it's correct as it should be, and not everything's in place. Yeah, of course, you have different opinions. That happens in every uh, form of life. But I think in general, I, I, I would like to think honestly, I, I respect the riders immensely. I hope they give me the same respect back. When I have to, when I have to make a decision, whether it's a big decision, a decision that doesn't get noticed. I'm always thinking of what's best for the FIM because that's what I work for, the governing body from a sporting perspective. But also then I'm looking out for the riders who are is important. And then you've got the promoter, Warner Brothers Discovery. So really I, I would place myself in the middle of a triangle really with riders at the top, FIM and Warner Brothers Discovery, and I just try and link everything together. Yeah, I, I would say my relationship with the riders I, I know a good deal with them. They're different characters, of course. But um, in general, I would treat the number one in the world the same as the number 18. I have to look at them as a, as, as an entity, as a person, not as a celebrity. I treat them all as wouldn't wouldn't treat anyone any different. Is anybody going to stop Bartosz Schmarschlik this year, Phil? Uh, it will be tough. I, I, you know, I don't think anyone will be going out in any... Uh, Bookies or betting shop, I'm sure he's going to be favourite in everyone's eyes. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's there for it's 15 other guys going for his spot. Yes, I I'm sure he's favourite. There's no doubt about that. But um, yeah, there's a lot of guys chasing on his tail, and you know, I'm sure that they'll want to jump above him. And if someone can have a very good first round, maybe get get the upper advantage over him, that might give him a bit of a boost. Uh, to go forward. So it's it's going to be interesting. Yes, we obviously know he's been dominant over these last few years, apart from an Artem Laguto ship, and even then he was very close. It, it, I don't think anyone can uh, sort of not admit that he is a strong rider and exceptional. But on the other hand, you've got 15 other guys every meeting or 14 permanent guys chasing down his... Uh, his title, and he, he's got a, a target on his back as well for everyone to want to beat him as well. I think as a world champion, it's everyone's dream to say you've beaten Smarzlik, you know, I've beaten Barton Smarzlik, whoever you are, whether you're number two in the world or number 102 in the world. I'm sure that's, uh, I know when I used to race, if you could 
get one over on, on a world champion, which I did maybe once or twice. It's like a massive achievement in your life, you know, and you, you sort of remember it forever. So yeah, there's a pressure in that, but um, I'm sure he can probably handle it. Let's see how he gets on. Bartek last year, of course, found himself involved in well, an unprecedented situation, and, and you did as well, I suppose, Phil, because you being race director and having to oversee everything that happened following the, the race suit saga. Um, what are your reflections on that a few months down the line now, looking back? Yeah, that was uh, not a good day for me in uh, I still, yeah, a lot, lot of uh, politics here. I, I, I'm genuinely disappointed I didn't see it myself. And not that it, it is my job. He's got seven or eight people in his team that could have seen it and should have seen it. Um, but yeah, it was uh, not not a good day for me at the office. But you know, we had to apply the rules that were in the rule book. Um, I don't know if you'll see it. It has changed slightly this year. That the first time you do it, it was quite a serious fine of sixteen. I think it's sixteen and a half thousand euros. If we do it again, then they would get thrown out. So. We have changed policy a little bit, but at the time, um, we're trying to protect our promoter as well. Because if we don't protect them and we let you know anarchy happen, you lose the credibility. You wouldn't see a Liverpool player or a Man City player going out with a different sponsor on this year. It wouldn't happen. So we, it did happen. There were things in place that didn't work from a local organizer. There should have been someone checking that. So there were failings on all parts. We're not going to say everything was uh, rosy. But yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it's was a very, very tough day for me. And uh, yeah, it was tough because in all ways, you know, when, you know, I, I felt really sorry for Bartek because of the situation. And I'd never seen him so stressed, obviously, as you can understand, could have lost the world championship. But yeah, now when we have to move forward and hopefully, like I say, nobody will do that. And uh yeah, it is always tough because you've got 15 other guys against him. And, uh, yeah, you might think everyone wants to support him, but it's all doggy dog as well. And, you know, and they all look after themselves. And I'm sure that they all did admit it was very harsh, but they all sort of, as well, rules and rules. So, yeah, it's uh, not a day I enjoyed at the office, I'll be honest with you. And uh, it did shake me up, really. But uh, that's gone now, and hopefully it won't happen again. I think when people saw you on the TV, you know, you yourself looked fairly stunned, really, as as to what had happened. Were you surprised at the lack of flexibility in that particular rule at the time? Because obviously, you know, it was you do this and you're out. There was no sort of middle ground, which you are saying now has changed. Um, but the rule book has to be applied, doesn't it? You can't change the rules in the middle of a meeting. And so, whilst severe, that was the um, that was the the penalty to pay. It is, it is very tough because in that situation, if you show weakness, then every time something comes up, well, you 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 turn the blind eye for that person. You you changed it for that. So we couldn't look who it was. We didn't think whether it was the world champion, whether it was number sixteen in the world. We we didn't even consider that in the, in the discussion. It was more about there's the rules. This is what's happened, and. Uh, yeah, and, and respect to to Bartek, how he put a statement out saying, look, it was my mistake. Somebody in my team made a mistake. Somebody should have seen it from my team. Um, yes. But it is, there's no point going back over it now. It's done. It, we have to move forward, and hopefully something like that won't happen. It, it does happen in sport. You know, like straight after I looked at FIFA's policy, uh, Olympics policy, and they're even stronger than, than ours, to be fair. If, um, yeah, so if a football player, I don't I think I've said it in an interview, Nicholas Bentner, Danish player, and I think it was a European or World Cup six, eight years ago, he pulled down the top of his shorts and he had paddy propeller pants on. Um, they fined him 100,000 euros for that. Um, but they also banned him for a game. Now, the 100,000 euros paddy power for the the publicity they got, they just said, oh, no problem, we'll pay the 100,000 euros. So if he hadn't had some other fine, then you'd have find other companies would use that stealth marketing to do it. Because you think, you know, in a World Cup final, someone would be happy to pay 100,000 euros to uh, someone to show up here and put their logo on. 
So if we don't, and this was the same in Roy Ends, it was really tough because it's easy to think, just give him a fine. That's what the main people said. Just give him a couple of thousand euros, everything's okay. As soon as we do that, for me then as a speeder rider, going to Torren, I would say, there's my 2,000 euros. I'm not going to, I'm going to wear my own sponsors. Suddenly you're going to have 16 riders doing the same thing. So it's easy to think, just give him a, a, a fine and, and just slap on the wrist. But then at Torren, what happens if all 16 riders say, okay, here's my few thousand euro fine. I'm going to wear whatever suit I want. Then the, the promoter has lost their intellectual property, which is that area of a rider. So I, there's, there's a lot of uh, back and forth and, uh, yeah. But I wasn't, I wasn't proud of it. I wasn't happy about it. I wish it hadn't happened is my answer, but it did. Perhaps one of the lesser known rules, but one now that I imagine that every Grand Prix rider or every Speedway rider is uh, is now fully familiar with. But I think the good thing was, during that briefing on that day, I said, I, w- I would advise you all to check the rule book and read it because you should know it. And uh, so I got a what sort of a, not a WhatsApp group, but a list. And they were all like, oh, can you send it us? So, Next morning, I sent everybody the rule book. And at the start of this season, I probably had six or seven writers ask me for the rule book, which up until this year has never really happened. So <laughs> they can get it. It's open for them to go on the FIM website and download it or look at it itself. But, you know, sometimes I have to help them run along. So, yeah, it just made them look at the rule book and read it and understand what they can and can't do. Well, Phil. As ever, always a pleasure and thanks for joining us on the podcast. I'm sure that we'll chat with you again further into the season, um, if if not sooner. And um, all the best for the Premiership once things get underway. 14th of March, the first day, isn't it? And as we were saying, you know, strongest lineup for, um, well, a decade, if not longer. Yeah, we've got the strongest lineup we've had for 10 years plus. Um, I'm looking forward to both, both my hats on. I'm really excited for the season. I know um, we've had, the season was up on TV last year, linear and uh, streaming. I know BSM was streaming was up last year. I know fans were up last year. I know season tickets are up this year. I really feel that people should look at them four or five comments and look at the positive. We've got good riders in the UK. Things are going in the right direction. Yes, we understand. We're not going to say it wasn't last year with two teams being lost but let's look at the positive and uh, let's look forward and I would hope we could come back this time next year and say it's going another step again that's the hope the CEO of the British Speedway Premiership Phil Morris on No Breaks No Fear and uh, we continue with our chats with the guys at the top in the next part we're going to speak to Rob Godfrey chairman of the BSPL, British Speedway Promoters Limited, and uh, we'll have a look uh, in in particular detail as to what's going to be going on in the championship. Some big changes there in terms of points limits and how things are going to look. So we'll speak to Rob Godfrey, who of course is also um, promoter of the Scunthorpe Scorpions in the championship as well. That's all on the way in the next part of No Breaks, No Fear. Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, makes banking faster and easier. Like this. Fargo, what's my checking account routing number? And this. Fargo, uh, turn off my debit card. And this. Fargo, what did I spend on groceries last month? And that's just the beginning. Do you, Fargo? You can. In the Wells Fargo mobile app. Learn more at wellsfargo.com slash getfargo. Terms and conditions apply. Your mobile carrier's availability and message and data rates may apply. Wells Fargo Bank and a member FDIC. No breaks, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. In this next part, the spotlight will firmly be on the championship, the Cab Direct Championship, which is going to be getting underway fairly soon as well. Starting off with the BSN series fixtures, the league programme itself doesn't really get going until May, but there's plenty of action to come as we head through March and into April. One of those who will be a very interested onlooker as a promoter at the Scunthorpe Scorpions, who of course won silverware last year winning the, the Knockout Cup, 
will be Rob Godfrey, who joins us now. Rob also is the chairman of British Speedway Promoters Limited, the BSPL. And uh, please say Rob joins us now. A long winter is out of the way, Rob. And, uh, well, the season now, you can almost smell it. It's just around the corner. It is, but it hasn't stopped raining, has it? It's uh, It started raining in September and it's still raining, which is obviously a worry. But, um, yeah, I think that long looking at the long, long race today, I think that we've got a real chance of starting the season when... Uh, it's it's supposed to so hopefully that will happen you see this is the thing isn't it that people don't realize about promoters that you spend a lot of time on weather apps and weather websites looking ahead to stand oh. i did it myself in the day i thought i wonder if the long range forecast for march is out and it is looking all right cautiously cautiously it is uh, and you know this winter i've got to tell you that it's come up normally runs practices all the way through the um, the winter we've run one since we finished one all winter because of the weather the weather's just been horrific it's been the worst winter that i can remember in 20 years um it hasn't been particularly cold but it's certainly been particularly wet but that bodes well because if you look at you know um the average we've had such a lot of rain earlier on hopefully we're gonna have a great summer so um yeah you're quite right i'm addicted to weather apps and i'm sure every other every other promoter is and you know when you've got a big lineup like bellevue have got on the Peter Craven, I bet Mark Lemon's sweating now, never mind day before, <laughs> looking at, the, you know, you put it together. There's an awful lot to put meetings together and it, it can be all wasted by a shower of rain. So hopefully, hopefully the the, the speedway gods are, sh- are shining on us come 15th of March and uh, the sun is there. Yeah, fingers crossed. Let, let's talk about some of the stuff that went on in the winter. A few bits from the AGM um, first up. Youth development was a big part of the discussions, wasn't it? And um, what to do with the National League. And also that's affected the championship points limits as well. Talk to us about that, because many felt ahead of the AGM that maybe the National League might not be a feature at all this year. And, and it's back and it's looking pretty healthy. But just tell us about that side of things. Yeah, obviously we've got, um, one or two riders coming up to probably the end of their careers and we've got a lot of youth that didn't get the opportunities so the championship took a decision that we need have to uh, include them so um, we also looked at all the riders that would be available for this next year uh, calculated their averages divided it by the teams and it pretty much came out at 37 points the team so to give everyone a chance so it, it worked hand in hand with rider availability and and the youth program and then as i say you know the the, the national league had got a little bit out of hand we wanted it to bring it back so that the same riders got a great opportunity to ride and and get track time and um, we reju- we were left with no standalone clubs this year which made it a little bit easier um, myself and Sheffield pitched in, Red Car pitched in, and we've created a league that I think is um, doing what it says on the tin now. It's 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 about youth development. So I'm um, really, really pleased that um, we've started this, and I believe it will grow. It will grow now that we've had a, re, re, um, a reset, basically. Um, so... Yeah, really looking forward to that, actually. And I think that um, everyone's put competitive teams together. No playoffs. It's just straight fixtures. And every fixture is going to count this year. So really looking forward to it, like I say. And it's um, it's a shared job, isn't it, um, between yourselves and Sheffield? But So the team's going to have two names. It's going to be the, the Sheffield Prowlers and the Scunthorpe Stags is how it's going to be divided. Yes, we're the Stags and they're the Prowlers. That's right, um, yeah. two, two individual uh, identities um but uh, you know it's a model that that everyone else can probably look at for going forward and it's something that we did previously and actually won it together we won the league i can't remember what year it was so it, it can be successful and it also gives the riders a, a lot more variant of, of tracks and track time you know they're going to get loads of track time at sheffield loads of track time at scum top as well as the away track so mm. it does once again it does what it says in the tin so you know going forward we are expecting other teams maybe next year to follow the same model 
the the decision was made that all clubs need to do something for for youth development, and obviously you're doing the you know the the, the top option, I guess, which is starting a, a full team, and you're going to have regular fixtures. Um, what are the plans? Uh, do we know those plans yet for for those outside uh, the, the the national league structure that haven't got a national league team? The the events that are likely to happen through the course of the season um, to to get that youth development um, obligation uh, into all these other clubs. Yeah, well, there's three options. You either take a a, a second half program and run at least four to six um, second half programs um, that's that's been vetted, and you know it's not just a, a cob together one. It's it's one that we we approve. Or you take a Grand Prix, what we what we were calling a Grand Prix National League round. Um, I don't know what the name of it is now, but um, some clubs are taking that. I know there's quite a few clubs taking that. So that gives up extra opportunities to the National League riders. It's the top right top riders or the ones that are available from your National League team will go and compete on other tracks. So um, that will be um, announced in due course um, in the next couple of weeks. It's just, um, you know, fixture availability will determine that, but... I think the majority of them are taking up the option of actually running second halves this year. Right, so second halves or a, or a National League uh, Grand Prix event. Look out for the, for the details on that then. Um, the challenges remain around certain clubs. Uh, we're talking about you know the youth development there, but also we've got these clubs that you've been fighting to keep. Peterborough and Wolves, of course, the, the key ones last year. Uh, they're going to be a big miss this year, of course. Um, is there any work still going on? Uh, that you know of from those uh, and also on a BSBL point of view too to to try and get those names back in Speedway? Yeah, obviously it's, it's, it is unfortunately down to the individual um, people on the ground at, at the, those tracks but the, the BSPL will give them every support they can. You've got to recognise that, that the great work that they did at Coventry was a pivotal point that will make developers stop, look and listen about closing tracks about saying Speedway is unviable because now it's in the statute books it's written that this judgment went against the developers and it's got to make developers look and realise that they can't just shut tracks down and build houses I know the one at Arlington's just been knocked back um, the one at uh, Rye House has got uh, the council looking at what they've previously done uh, without planning so we are we are abreast of things um and, and we can help in any any endorsements that we need to do and we are doing in the case of of wolverhampton and world and have done in the case of peterborough when the planning um application went in from a bspl point that's that's really all we can do we can't go and say you're going to give that track back to Peterborough, you know, the same with Wolverhampton. But we can fight it internally through our through our um, contacts within Sport England, who we have now a fantastic relationship, and they they are on the case with us, uh, which previously wasn't the case. And um, they recognise that Speedway is a, a, a family sport heritage sport has been around for a long year a long time and are fighting the cause with us so that's what we we are doing um and we will continue to do and um, hopefully the rot has stopped now and there won't be any more closures they'll actually be the opposite and traps open that's what we hope your, your track, you know, Scunthorpe, um, is is that the sort of ideal scenario? And, and maybe other tracks like, say, Redcar, Workington, you know, is that the kind of model of, of getting some land that's out of the way that, that is not going to be developed in future? How do you protect Speedway going forward, I suppose, for these new tracks when they do start up to, to prevent us being in a similar situation again? Well, we were fortunate. I think the Redcar one was fortunate as well because it was designated on the local plan as disrupted most for um, to be placed into that area. So um, we're pretty much protected as long as we're there and do everything as we should do. And, I, and I'm sure Red Cars are saying, not quite sure on on the, the situation at, at, uh, at Workington, but that training track has been there a long time. I suspect that's protected as well. Uh, but, you know, the, these are the key things when you're going and, and you're renting a dog stadium, you know there's no there's no protection as such. 
Um, this is this is a vulnerability, obviously, of, of where our tracks are located. But, but as I say, this this judgment that's come out at, at uh, Coventry, hopefully, will stop developers thinking they can just kick a speedway out, the track out, and then in two years' time think that they can build houses on it. As I believe, probably is what's happening at, at Wolverhampton. Um, so you know, we've got tools tools now to fight to fight it now so and we are we are fighting it on to the um the championship situation we've, we've talked about the, the lower points limit um it's made a different route for some clubs now into how they're building their teams um people people will say it's watered down i i personally don't believe it's watered down i think it's more even uh, just tell us about that whole how the, how the championship's going to look this year yeah, I, I I disagree. Watered down. Uh, you know, if you look at my team, I've took Ryan Douglas out, brought Kyle Howarth in, took Drew Kemp out, and brought uh, Luke Harrison in. So it's not it's not watered down at all. It, it's got the same consistency and the same um, makeup as as I built it last year. Some teams have gone different this year, but it is all about making sure the youth have an opportunity. And if you look at all the teams this year, ninety percent of them have given the youth the chance. And that's what, you know, the, the ethos was on at the AGM. It's giving them the opportunity and to race against the youth at number seven positions. It's all right, you know, a 42-point limit and you've gone strong on your top six and you've got to put a two-pointer in. And then he's so vulnerable. Well, this year, they're not vulnerable because they're racing against their equals from the National League. So, you know, I... I it's, it's unfortunate what's happened to Plymouth at the minute. I, I really, really do feel for them. Um, hopefully, we can find a solution for them and we can find a, a rider to fit in for Nico Cavati while he comes back. But I think the championship is, you know, people will say, oh, there's some standout, standout teams. But, I, you know, I, I was I was tipping Plymouth, to be honest, because of their strength at reserve um, prior to Cavati getting injured. So, I think it's until the, the season's started off and we've got a few results under our, under our belts, um, I don't think you're going to see a clear a clear uh, team out there that, that's going to that's going to win. I think it's going to be it is going to be a lot closer than it has been. If you look at last year, nine teams, five were so much stronger than the other four. Um, this year, I don't believe that's the case. There's some changes as well into bringing new riders in. Of course, um, Glasgow with uh, Vadim Tarasenko was a bit of a talking point. It was, you know, fantastic mm-hmm. rider, but that sort of move is going to be a bit harder for all of the teams this year, isn't it? Well, well, it is. I mean, the Tarasenko was a, um, not an oversight, but it was something that we knew there was a loophole there, and, and Glasgow grabbed it, and to their advantage, made it work. Um <laughs> This year, that loophole's gone, um, so that won't be able to happen. And the uh, assessed averages for the Premiership are quite a lot higher, so that your conversion rate down to the Championship is is also quite high. It makes it virtually impossible to put them riders in, especially on a 38-point limit. So, um, yeah, I think that Glasgow did a fantastic job, as I say, last year. Um, they've had to shed a lot of points to get back under 38 points and they've got a whole new look team. Um, as I said, mine's just two changes. So that's where I think that we maybe have a, an opportunity. Interesting as well that, um, and this is sort of comes back from the AGM, I suppose, but overall Oxford uh, are going to be a story this year, operating in all three leagues. We talked about the National League and the Championship. They're also in the Premiership as well. So... Um, I, I think that's certainly a first in modern times. Um, some historians will probably say otherwise, further further afield. But um, certainly, in this last twenty years, it's not been done before, is it? No, no, I can never remember it being done. Um, it hasn't been done the whole time I've been in Speedway, and it's twenty years this year. So, um, no, you know, Jamie and thinks that uh, they want more fixtures. They, they, the, the crowds were phenomenal last year. Um, the stadium wants more fixtures. The public want more fixtures. So um, why not give it a go? It could be a new model for other clubs to to, to adapt. Who knows? It is um, it's definitely an unknown. But 
I think it's it's definitely worth a gamble. Yeah, nobody can complain about wanting more speedway. That's got to be a good thing. Um, on to your side then, Scunthorpe. Um, you touched on a couple of changes there, but uh, you face Workington first up. We've sort of just mentioned them briefly, but they've got an interesting lineup. Um, Selena Lieberman as well, first female rider in um, in professional British speedway in, in the championship. So that's going to be a talking point too and one to watch, but um, you're sort of facing a bit of a, an unknown team there then. Yeah, absolutely. It's... it's um... It's a total unknown. It's um, you know it's going to be interesting to see Selena adapt to British Speedway. Um, looking forward to it, embracing that. We, um, you know, it's going to be unknown for them really. I mean, they're going to ride on a track that they've never ridden on most of them. So yeah, it's, it's um, we're really looking forward to having Workington as our first fixture. To be honest, I think it's it's, it's not predictable because no one knows how they're going to go. So, and it's certainly a new name back in British Speedway, and I am looking forward to going to Wellington in, in the uh, away fixture. People will always look at the, the rider signings in the winter, but I think you've made a, another key signing in a new manager as well, Dave Pete standing down, and coming in is David Howe, who's been spinning the spanners for Ryan Douglas at Scunthorpe over the last uh, number of years, and still is doing so, in fact, uh, when he's racing at uh, Leicester, of course. But uh, with Dougie stepping away, um, in comes David Howe to be team manager at Scunthorpe now, and a uh, huge wealth of experience there. Yeah, I think David bling, brings a, a hell of a lot more to the party than, than just being a team manager, putting changing riders in, around in, in races. His, his mechanical setup now is we're working with Ryan, he's second to none. And that was evident at the Knockout Cup final, Heat 14. Jay Callum was really struggling with his machine. Um, David said, do this. Uh, and it was radical. And it worked. It got us the 4-2 that we needed to to take the win um he brings that expertise when we look at a track david will give the boys some advice especially the younger ones with nathan and and luke there that that won't be wrong he's done it been there been at the top been at, you know he's now a team manager and he's going to pass that knowledge on he is our eighth rider he's our number eight david and i think he's a key key signing to be honest so I, I, you know, I believe that that will help, definitely help us, give us a chance to get some uh, some more trophies this year. And yeah, um, I suppose your biggest signing would be replacing Ryan Douglas, who departed after ten years. And maybe just a quick word of wow. of uh, everything he's he's brought to you over that decade. But <laughs> Kyle Howarth comes in, um, and for him, it's sort of back to where it started. It was, because I was just looking in 2009, I was looking at a team sheet, and that was his first time he rode for us in 2009. He had a 3.3 average in the National League when we made a redeclaration. So he did start at the bottom. He was my biggest regret letting him go. Um, and, it, and it was over five pence, I can, I can assure you. <laughs> it was over five pence. Um, <laughs> right. Funny story. Yes, yeah, five pence, because I wouldn't pay him 15 pence a mile. I was too tight to pay him 15 pence a mile. Um, and then he left me and went, to, I think he went to, to pull the Buccaneers then, that were running the Buccaneers. Uh, biggest regret I've ever made, I can assure you that. Wow. And I still think about it right now, over five pence. <laughs> but the times were hard then, times were hard, and we were setting out in the sport. And it didn't, re- you know, I was... Um, should have Should have just looked at the bigger picture, really. Well, I suppose but, if yeah. life's like that, isn't it? You'd you'd make lots of different decisions if you knew the outcome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and you know, had I made that decision, I believe Kyle would have maybe spent the last maybe majority of his last twenty years at Scunthorpe because you know he is he is a favourite of mine. I've always got on well with Kyle and the family, um, and I'm for the first time ever we've got him back. So I'm really pleased about that. But equally sad about Dougie. Um, but I've seen Dougie grow from. We brought him over as a raw 17-year-old, 18-year-old, whatever it was, and and developing to potentially could be still be a Grand Prix rider. So I'm really, really pleased to see him get that ambition to leave us and to move on. Um, it, it, it's sad, but it's actually um, not sad. I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased for the lad. Um, had he come back this year, 
it would have posed a big problem with the eight point limit. I can assure you, anyway. Um, but you know, I, w- I wish him well. Um, I'm still in contact with him now, so um, if anything changes, he will be back. And you got silverware last year. I know you you said at the start of the season that you felt that you, you, that your Scunthorpe side, you know, had potential to to definitely you know, win, win something. And, and I think you had your eye on the league particularly, but, and you came close, but um, knockout cup, obviously, uh, you know, a huge moment there to, to get that first taste of those honours for, you know, many of the riders are returning this year and they'll be looking to kick on even further now. Yeah, I think we were, we were there and thereabouts. I was um, disappointed to get a pull and get a 45 draw and then lose it in the playoffs at Scunthorpe. Um, but also pleased that um, we won at Paul in the Knockout Cup final. That was a special night. And I just want some more special nights this year, if we possibly can. If the team performs as I believe it can perform, then I think there is some more trophies in the team. So, especially with David being involved as well on the setup side. So, it's good. It's, yeah, it's um, probably looking at a good season for us. Um, but I also want a, a good season for everybody. You know, everybody is in it to win it. We've all put teams together to win it. So as long as um, there's some good close meetings, I really don't care. I really don't care. Good speedway is what's on the top of the agenda. And what, what are you looking forward to personally as you, as you look ahead to the season now? What, what, what is it you're excited for? Is it that, that first heat, the tapes going up, or one of the bigger events in the further into the season? What, 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 are you, what are you excited about as a promoter? Lifting the trophy at the end of the year. Beating Paul again. That would, that would, be, the, the, uh, that would be nice. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love my speed, right? There's, there's, there's no nothing that comes close to Speedway in my life, in my heart. Um, I'm the biggest fan of Speedway. I love Speedway, as I keep saying. And I just, whatever happens, it, it, as long as we have an enjoyable, and everyone tries, I don't really care. But, but I do believe we've got a chance. Yeah, and what was it, was it um, sweeter winning the the knockout cup at pool did it did that sort oh, of, of add to it yeah of course because after the first round after the first leg you know Paul were four down and um they thought it was in the bag i mean i actually watched it on youtube last night it was a rerun of it and um we just kept digging deep at the right time and and pulled it round and <clears throat> got to heat 13 we sort of knew it was there. Heat 14, the key one was Drew winning it and uh, Jake coming in third. He got past that. He was on a 5-1, but it didn't really matter because that was it. And it was just tears. I, I can assure you there was tears. Um, relief. 2012 was when we won the, the then Premier League. Back in 2012, so it's been an awful long time. But as you get older, you just want it a little bit more and I want it a little bit more now. So, I want it a bit this year. Um, hopefully, we can, as I keep saying, we can do it, but it's in the rider's hands. Um, and hopefully, we can do it at Scunthorpe, whatever we win this year. Yeah, you got the in taste. Front of our own fans. You got, they got the taste for it now. Uh, finally, the, there's um, a, bit, a, a big change, a notable change. Um, at Scunthorpe, but one that maybe sort of slightly goes under the radar for fans, but it is a huge thing in that you've got a new sponsor for the side um, because you've you've had the uh, the the Henderson's insurance and Attis insurance for for so long, and and that's a that's a major change for you as a promoter and and for the support of the club. Yeah, Joe Henderson's been a fantastic supporter of the club, um, probably for about eighteen years now. Um, it's, time, it's time he wanted to move on. His family's a great football fan. The football team has um, gone through some turbulent times and he's, he's pledged his support to them. So he will still support us, absolutely. He's not walking away from us. But it was time for him to step away from being main team sponsor. And then my great friend, who has been 
fantastic to me and my family and his family. Um, he, he's, he's sponsored us so for so many years now. Uh, Ellie Rose Travel. Uh, it was a no-brainer. He just said, "I'll do it. Don't worry. I'll do it. I'll, I want to do it. I want to do it." Which he gives so much anyway to us. People don't understand how much he gives to the riders, to the to, to the club, to the to, to me personally. It's just um, so it was a natural fit, really. Um, he wanted to be in, uh, his name to be there, and, and quite rightly it should be for all the contribution that he's given to us over the years. So I'm quite proud that he's got that opportunity, you know, because I felt that Joe was never going to give it up. Um, not that I wanted him to, because I certainly didn't. Um, so, yeah, that's how we've got to Ellie Rose, trans- uh, uh, Ellie Rose Travel here today. And it's not it's not cheap running a club, is it? There's a lot of expense that goes sure. probably, you know, that that, that people don't realise, you know, the amount of insurance and all this, you know, not not least the track and the preparation and staff, riders' costs. It's um, It can be an expensive business. And so, you know, the importance of a sponsor, whoever that sponsor is, is absolutely crucial to, to all clubs. Yeah, I mean, it, it's about running the club. Like you say, it's about running the club. You, you know, I've got seven or eight tractors. I've got equipment that that just it's fantastic when it runs and then when it doesn't run it's just money pit it, it it's it's about upgrading this year we've upgraded with a new stand we fortunately Wolverhampton uh had no longer use for it so we purchased it off them and put that and it's in and we've got a new video screen this year that's going to double up as a a two minute clock and a, a scoreboard it's about reinvesting and people like Shane and Ellie Rose Travel have have helped us reinvest not just also financially he, he's down at my track every weekend helping you know we've um been building the place together as such for the last 10 years so it's um it's, it's about moral it's about financial it's about everything that else that goes with um people like shane and and, and main sponsors and, and everything else it's, it is a, a very expensive hobby as such um certainly easy if you if you uh if you rent a stadium as such you move in you come in on a thursday at four o'clock everything's done for you as such you get your track done and then you go home but with your own stadium it's it's quite quite a it's a full-time job by itself mm. yeah i've got another full-time job that i do so um but i love it i won't deny i love it i absolutely love it i love being there I love cutting the grass. I love it, keeping it clean. I love everything about it. I love running speedway. So it's uh, it's my life. Yeah, and and people maybe don't realise that you you do the track. Obviously, you like sort of track curator, but you also you're the man on the mic as well when the meeting's running and, and all that kind of stuff too. So you're firmly involved in it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying. I'm trying to get away from that. I mean, I got <laughs> Kevin Long, uh, Kevin, Kevin, not Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Moore to do it last year. And, and Kevin was fantastic, and I thought oh, I need to stop doing this. He's fantastic; he's a lot better than me. Um, but it, but it was a, a case of necessity of, of doing it myself. Um, but hopefully, Kevin will do some this year and give the fans a rest from me. But um, I just, yeah, we have to do it to keep the club running. We have to do everything we possibly can uh, um, to, to 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 make it pay. But you know, we we were blessed last year. We had reasonable crowds last year, so I'm very pleased about it. And I say we're a good team this year. Hopefully, everyone will come back, and some more will come back as well. Um, to find the because Speedway is getting a better footprint on social media, etc. Um, and get people to come and have a look what it's about. We've got promotions on this weekend at at the football ground. We've got a community day against Chester. Um, so we've got a, a position there, handing out leaflets. So hopefully we can tempt a few people to come have a look what we're about, not just the football. So we are trying. It's um, and I'm sure every other club's trying, but it's just um, it, for me, it's time. It's time. I say I've got my main business, and then my speedway is my hobby. <laughs> Speedway as a whole, though, just overall to, to round this off, um, British Speedway, 
seems to be in the best place it's been for quite some time. And and certainly when you look at the Premiership, the, the level of riders that we've got coming in uh, and are going to be racing this year, you know, easily probably the, the best lineup in the last decade. Um, and that's got to be good for for cl- for clubs of all levels. Absolutely. And you know what? I've been looking at, uh, I sit down at nine, I watch YouTube videos of eight, ten, nine, ten years ago when I look at the, the riders that, we're riding it and the ones that are coming back last year and this year and i just i agree with you it is definitely the best lineups that we've had for a long 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 time i wouldn't say it's 10 years it might even be more probably since the ricardson days however long that was ago um but it's definitely turned the corner fair play to the premiership guys promoters and and owners you know they have really stepped you up they they want to this sport to grow as much as we all want it to grow and they've They've gone the extra mile in these last two years to to tempt the riders back as as you know Phil Morris has helped as well. He's a, a great statue and a great figure in in World Speedway, and his his um, connections with these riders as um, with one or two have definitely brought them back here. So we're looking at uh, one of like you say one of the best Premiership. Um, years that I can I can I can remember for a long long time and it's going to be exciting to see Magic you know last year we saw Wolfingham back seeing Magic Nofsky this back this year Millick you know Lampard it's just probably a dream come true really and uh, long may that continue long may that continue we are trying I can assure you that we're all trying <laughs> good stuff well look keep on keeping on uh, Rob thanks for joining us and um Look forward to, to seeing the Scorpions in action and um, up against Workington first up yeah. at the start of the season. Easter Is it Easter weekend? It is. It's uh, Good Friday, half past five start. Um, yeah, I, 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 until then, it um be nervous once that first race is, has uh, left the starting tapes. I think it will be joyful. Rob Godfrey, the chairman of the BSPL, British Speedway Promoters Limited, and, of course, promoter of the Scunthorpe Scorpions on No Breaks, No Fear. In the last part, then, just a quick roundup of all the bits of news that we've got at this moment in time, and we'll look ahead to the upcoming fixtures coming your way in March. Once they get going, they're coming thick and fast. That's on the way in just a mo. No Breaks, No Fear. The official British Speedway podcast. In this final part, then, we're going to look ahead to what is coming your way in March in British Speedway, heading up to the Easter weekend, which, of course, is the final weekend in March this year. So there's lots going on. Um, Keep your eyes peeled on social media for details of press and practice uh, sessions for your respective club. They're going on um, right, left and centre, really, over the next few weeks. The big one, though, will be the Premiership Media Day. It's taking place on the 20th of March. And whilst it's not something that you can turn up and go down to in person you can get involved online as we were saying earlier with phil morris uh, the 20th of march and um, it's going to be 1 p.m there's uh, going to be uh, a live press conference darren fletcher is going to be hosting it and chatting to, uh, to to various riders from all of the premiership clubs so um, make sure you join us for that because that's going to be big and you'll be able to watch that online from the um, british speedway premiership media day on March the 20th, certainly something to uh, check out. And then looking ahead to the fixtures, well, it all gets underway officially. Thursday, March 14th is the day. That's uh, that's curtain up on the new season. And we've got two Premiership fixtures that day on Thursday, March 14th, both starting at 7.30. It's the Leicester Lions versus the Bellevue Aces and the Oxford Spires, of course, uh, making a return to the top level of British Speedway up against another of the newcomers, the Birmingham Brummies. So those are the first two fixtures in anger. We've also got the testimonial that night of uh, Kyle Howarth, and that'll be the Sheffield Tigers versus a world select side, which uh, will feature Freddie Lindgren, as uh, many of the meetings that I'm about to tell you about will feature Freddie Lindgren. He's doing quite a few of them. Um, the Ben Fund Bonanza is going to be big. That's March the 16th. They have announced Freddie Lindgren is taking part in that, as is Dan Bewley, and that's at Workington on Saturday, March 16th. A two o'clock start for that one in the afternoon. 
at Workington. And then the day after that, Sunday, March 17th, Charles Wright has his testimonial at Redcar. It does indeed feature Freddie Lindgren. So uh, Freddie Lindgren heading to uh, to Redcar there. That's a three o'clock start time for the Charles Wright testimonial. Another top class lineup there. Um, so uh, quite a few Bellevue riders involved in that one. And of course, Redcar riders of the current moment. And then you probably say the big one is Monday, March 18th, the Peter Craven Memorial. It's a seven o'clock start time uh, at the National Speedway Stadium. And uh, this is a stellar lineup. And I can tell you who is confirmed at the time of recording this. Uh, Freddie Lindgren, Max Frick, Dan Bewley, Luke Becker, Jason Doyle, Robert Lambert, Matt Zajanowski, Brady Kurtz, Jamin Lidsey, Norik Bladorn, Selena Liebman, Connor Mountain, Ben Cook and Connor Bailey. That's not a bad lineup for a, uh, a pre-season friendly, is it? And I was speaking to Kelvin Tatum the other day and Kelvin reckons that that lineup is is better than the Grand Prix. Uh, so uh, it, it, and there's still what I think two to be announced there as well. So uh, we'll wait and see what those names are. But certainly um, a heavyweight uh, top six or seven there, and that will be, of course, a is it a six rider final? That's what they had last year, isn't it? Six rider final. Um, exciting meeting that one, the uh, Peter Craven Memorial. And certainly something a little bit different to uh, look out for as well. And then it's back to Premiership action. Thursday, March 20th, uh, 21st, it's Ipswich versus Bellevue, Leicester versus Kings Lynn, and Oxford Spires versus the Sheffield Tigers. Monday the 25th, uh, Premiership action continues. It's the Birmingham Brummies against the Sheffield Tigers. Thursday, March 28th, Sheffield versus Oxford. And uh, th- also we've got uh, Ipswich versus the Birmingham Brummies and Kings Lynn versus Leicester Lions. Friday, March 29th, Good Friday. We've got um, the uh, National Development League coming into action with the Bellevue Colts against the Leicester Lion Cubs. Also Scunthorpe Scorpions versus the Workington Comets, the Pool Pirates versus Oxford Cheetahs as the BSN series gets underway. And there's uh, a local derby between the Red Car Bears and a Newcastle Diamonds select side. 7.30 at Red Car for that one on Good Friday. Easter Saturday, Plymouth Gladiators versus the Pool Pirates in the southern section of the BSN series. And also the Berwick Bandits versus the Workington Comets in the Border Trophy, uh, which is going to be home and away on the Saturday and the return on the Sunday back over at Northside. And then uh, Easter Monday, Bellevue Aces versus the Sheffield Tigers at lunchtime in the Premiership Knockout Cup quarterfinal first leg. Also got Birmingham Brummies versus Oxford Spires in the evening at 7.30. Leicester versus Ipswich in the Knockout Cup as well. And that takes you into April and to the other side of the bank holiday weekend and speedway season from then. It's going to come thick and fast. We won't get into April just yet, but there's a lot to look forward to. Keep up to date with it all here on No Breaks, No Fear. Next week, we'll be back with another episode looking ahead to uh, those first few meetings. Uh, We'll hopefully hear from uh, Charles Wright and Kyle Howarth and Kelvin Tatum on next week's episode. Uh, and um, maybe some other surprises as well that we're not aware of at this moment. But uh, we're working on that. We're back next Tuesday for your next episode of No Breaks, No Fear. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at a track soon. Take care. No Breaks, No Fear, the official British Speedway podcast. Sports Social Podcast Network.